Good evening. Welcome to our CTCC Prayer and Praise Week. This is our second night. We are glad that you are able to join us. Um, if you are joining us on Twitch and uh, you are still able to, come on by to the church uh, with your masks and things, and there's plenty of space. Um, <clears throat> we welcome you to join along. Uh, we have a special um, prayer type uh, that we're going to be running through, and I'll give a little bit more instruction as we go. And we have some great selection of songs for us to pray through and sing and lift up our voices to the Lord. So um, join us as we celebrate and we lift up our prayers to the Lord. Uh, let's pray before we start. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, as we come before you as a church today, I pray that your love will uh, be with us throughout this whole time and also throughout the day. I pray that we can come before you uh, throughout this week with our sins and all our regrets uh, to give it up to you and to repent, to rejoice, and to even uh, be sad if you have to. I pray that you'll be with us be with us all in safety and in love and mercy. I pray for this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, can we get everyone to stand uh, when we sing this first song? Separate. 
So as I've mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So those of us who are in person, please grab a seat. Um, when we're on missions, we have a saying, uh, especially in our youth ministry, we have a saying, um, especially in the mornings, right? When we get up, if you're, you know, tired from the work before, if you get excited for the day of, and, but we need to be fed, right? Physically and spiritually. But we often lean toward the food that fill our bellies, but not our souls. So we have a saying. We say, um, bread of life before the bread for life, right? So before you start filling your bellies and your mouths with food, we want to fill our souls and our hearts and our minds with the word of God. And um, yesterday we began with the Acts prayer, kind of setting the, the, the theme, the flow, the, the feeling of how this week should be. T- today, we're going to be looking at something that is a little bit different than we're used to. It's called the Hallel prayer. And it is, it is a beautiful Jewish prayer used during uh, community celebrations and community prayer times it is led um, and it's responsive it's a community-based celebration it is used during like passover or big events and it is for the community as a whole to come together and praise and you guys have probably heard the word hallel before in a different way right hallelujah so let's kind of remind ourselves what this is so everybody say hallelujah Oh, oh, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah means what? It means that we praise God or we thank God. And that's what the word is. Hallel is a praising of God, a thanking of God prayer. It is praise song worthy. It is prayer. It is a community time. It is done together in this it is based in scripture. It is done through uh, Psalm 113 all the way through 118. And uh, we're not going to do the entirety, right? Back and forth, back and forth for all these chapters. We, we took excerpts and I want us to go through it. But before we go into like the details and the reading back and forth, I want us to look at what it really means within each of these chapters. And I highly recommend that you don't look at the excerpts that we're going to be reading as its uh, totality, right? It's in its entirety. I want you guys to read it um, word for word all the way through so that you get the full grasp. But this uh, set of passages, songs, and prayers are written to remind uh, what was, what is, and what will forever be. How God was and is and forever will be in our lives. Psalm 113 talks about God's power as the creator, as the one who sets up all things. Uh, Psalm 114 talks about how God split the, the Reed Sea, the Red Sea, for the Israelites to escape away from Egypt. And it talks about his power and ability to uh, change the world for his people. 115 talks about the debt that we owe that we cannot possibly pay back. But we do our best, not because we can pay something, but we recognize that Christ has paid the debt for us. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys had your parents always, like even when you were younger, remind you, like, don't forget to say thank you, and you say thank you. That's kind of what this, um, this psalm is about. So it's a reminder for us to, re- like, it's God reminding us to be grateful. And 116, it's about how uh, that debt that we owe is an obligation, something that we should do in remembrance of what God has done for us. 117.18 is basically a, a, a remembrance to tell us that not only are we supposed to be grateful, remember everything, but it also gives us the power and ability given by God to ask for favor, for requesting of his divine intervention in many ways. So this is a, again, responsive. It is a prayer done for us written for us so that I read one verse, you read one verse, and we go back and forth and we complete the entirety of this prayer together. And I'm sure you guys have had lots of individual prayers in your life, but this is a community prayer. 
This is something that we do together as a body in Christ. And that's what we're celebrating, right? We're celebrating that Jesus has come, that he has resurrected, that he has taken our debts, our sins, our trespasses, and put it on himself so that we may live a life that is more like Christ every day. So we're going to read the first part, sing some songs, come back to the second part as a prayer, um, and then we'll finish out the evening that way. So if you will... Um, I'll read uh, one of the verses, and please read all the highlighted in the yellow. So, Psalm 113. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And then 114. What ails you, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back. O mountains, that... O mountains, that you skip like rams. O hills, like lambs. Verse 7. Who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water? 115. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. Amen. Please keep these words in your heart in remembrance of all that God has done. It is a plea. It is a declaration. It is a debt that we cannot pay on our own because it is a free gift of grace. So keep this word in your heart as we sing these songs, as a prayer, as a petition as a remembrance and adoration of who God is. So let us sing together.
this time to pray through these passages and and the guys in the back will rotate verse uh chapters 113 through 115 for you guys to remember the words that you guys have recited and you guys have said with your own lips but think back to this day what was your day like today is it full of praise is it full of adoration is it full of repentance and love for the lord is your time with your god this past week been such that we can give and celebrate? Was your life in the past year, in the past X amount of years that you've been alive, is it worth praising about? Because God has delivered you to this point. So let us take this time to pray. And many of us are wondering, what if my life hasn't been perfect? What if it's been hard and I come before the Lord broken and shamed and guilt driven? That's why this song is so beautiful and we're gonna sing it again because he finds you where you are and you you are how he wants you to be right now. So pray and give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah to his name. So let's pray at this time about your life, how he has formed you and made you, how he has delivered you and taken you to a place where he can lift you up when you're crawling and falling into pits and stumbling over your own words and actions. Now is the time that we give thanks to the Lord because he is the one that has delivered us. He is the one who rescues us. He is the one that brings salvation and grace and mercy and blessing. So let us pray. Oh Lord, how you love us. How you adore us. Your sufferings. How you continue to bring your salvation and redemption over and over again. Daily life. How I failed you today. How I failed you every day. And how you have delivered the Egyptians out from the Israelites out of Egypt, uh, away from the Egyptians, and into the land of freedom. How you have split the seas and the miracle of being able to walk on dry land. How you have delivered us, O Lord, as we see the walls of terror, as we walk in faith every day, knowing that that what's ahead of us, we don't know what's ahead of us, and we know what is behind us. But the walls are there supporting us. But the dry earth that you have created and supported for us. In our life of trouble and sin and persecution and worry and anxiety and the relational issues, we come before you and lay it all before you, Lord, now because you have delivered us. 
troubles that we've seen, things that we have gone through, that you have continued to, to bear uh, upon us, your grace. And as we sit here and pray and give you thanks and sing hallelujah to your name, hallelujah to your works, hallelujah to your hand of healing and mercy. We sing hallelujah, O oh Lord, because you are praiseworthy, you are honored. that we may remember what it will be like tomorrow when we stumble again, tomorrow when we fall again, tomorrow when we sin before you, so that we may know what it means to repent and come before you with faith. Be with us, O Lord, as we remember your works. Remember the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. reminder, uh, Psalm 116, 17, and 18 that we're going to be reading now in, in a responsive way is about the joy that we have in remembrance of what God has done and in gratitude and memory and now we come to a place where we can request and petition onto the Lord uh, because we believe what he has done and we know that he was faithful to our prayers and he will answer us. So um, in response, uh, please read the highlighted parts. Psalm 116, 17, and 18. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of shell laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple, and I will trust in the Lord Savior. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from the 
I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Praise the Lord, all the nations. Extol him, all peoples. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. And as we remember uh, the love of God and his steadfastness, let us come before the Lord in lifting up these songs.
as the guys are going to rotate the passage once again. We're going to go into a time of prayer. And this is the final prayer of the Hallel prayer, right? The praising and the glory of God's name prayer. There's so much to be thankful for. There's so much to be grateful for. And there are hundreds of things, right, that we can celebrate. Um, What's been going on that is joyful and praiseworthy in your life that you need to lift up? Because as a community right now, that's what we're going to be doing together in one heart, in one spirit, in one one voice. We're going to be lifting up a celebration onto the Lord, thanking Him for who He is. Right? So let's go into a time of prayer right now about his steadfast love. No matter how lonely and how, uh, how things are in the world right now, the steadfast love is forever. It endures forever. It will never fail you. It will never just disappear in your life. It is always consistent and ever growing because of that's who he is. Many people are wondering why the youth ministry is doing a week-long prayer and praise night, right? Uh, every night for a week. Why do we do this? It's not to be showy. It's, it's, in fact, a humble way to adore and to give thanks and praise and celebrate who God is in our life. And the foremost and the most important thing that we are grateful for is that Jesus has come to save us. That Jesus our Lord and Savior has come to take sinners like us out of the grips of sin and death into a life of celebration and hope and joy to lift us up on His shoulders. So let us take this time um, to just pray a celebratory prayer.
guilt about anything but to focus on the steadfast, everlasting, enduring love of our God who is eternal and is infinite. We thank you, O oh God, that you are so good. And we thank you that we're able to celebrate and joyously lift up your name like this together.
So uh, thank you for joining us on our second night of prayer and praise week. Uh, we have a full band tomorrow. We have a lot more prayers to still be had. Please take today as a remembrance of uh, if you have a hard time praying and you don't know what to pray, you can pray through Psalms. You can pray through the book of Psalms, especially uh, 113 through 118, and let it be a reminder uh, for us that uh, when we don't have the words, God has already given us what to pray and how to pray it. So uh, don't forget that. And for those of us joining online, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And those who are here, you guys get a bonus. So you guys can ask for a song if they're up for it. Uh, otherwise, God bless you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow.